So on uh, US EPA 30 with Butch Wilmore being EV1, he is going to be wearing the red stripes on the spacesuit. And Terry Burtz being EV2, he is going to be wearing the white stripes on his suit. So both crew members are going to egress the airlock, which is going to be egressing first. And you see Terry, who's going to be translating to the lab forward end cone, um, very similar translation path to the first DVA. And he's at that end cone, he's going to be putting some inhibits in place um, that is required for mating and demating some cables that's for the IDA task. So he does some on the starboard side, and then he goes to the nader side to um, essentially unplug this visiting vehicle power um, so that during the EVA, we are not making any hot mates or demates. Meanwhile, Butch is going to be translating to node 2 zenith forward end cone, again, a very similar translation path that he had for EVA1. And he's going to be going to PMA2, the pressurized mating adapter, same, same uh, worksite location as EVA1. He's going to be setting up that area, setting down a, a bag in which they are going to be removing the PMA2 cover. So this cover acts as a thermal and micrometeorite protection and we need to remove it because it's, this is where item one is going to be installed. So both crew members help in that removal and they pack up that cover and put it into the bag. Once that's complete, um, the crew is going to finish up the cable routing that was not completed on the, the first TVA. So Terry's gonna be working on the starboard side. You see him right here, he's mating and demating some connectors. Um, this is what those inhibits were needed so that none of these uh, connections that he has or will be will be hot mates or, or demates. So Butch is going to be on the port side and he's essentially going to be doing the same thing. Um, you'll be seeing him mating and demating some of those connectors here. And once the connectors have been um, connected up, they are going to continue the cable routing of that. Um, <clears throat> as Karina mentioned some of these are for IDA-1 and some of these are for IDA-2. Moving over to, back over to Terry with this orange cable, um, you'll see this orange cable going up to the node 2 forward end cone and that will be needed for IDA-2 connections. Moving back over to Terry, uh, the cables that are going to be um, at the PMA-2 nader location, that's for IDA-1. And then you can see him routing the ones that are going to be needed for IDA-2, again on that node 2 forward end cone. And that should complete all of the Theida cable routing that's required for these EVAs. Once that's done, um, Terry's going to head back to the lab forward end cone and basically plug back in that vis visiting vehicle power. So those inhibits he put in place, he's going to go ahead and mate those back again. And both crew members are going to help with the, the cleanup at the work site of PMA2. Um, Terry is going to go ahead and pick up that bag that was left out on EVA-1 and bring that back inside in the airlock. And Butch is going to grab the bag that has the PMA-2 cover in it and bring that back to the airlock. And so they stow both of those bags inside the airlock and then they grab the bags that they will need for the rest of the tasks for the EVA. So Terry's task is going to be on ESP-2, which is the external stowage platform. He is going to be reconfiguring a foot restraint and he will then go ahead and ingress into that foot restraint so he can complete the lubrication of the space station remote manipulator system, the SSRMS latching end effector, the LEE. And so Samantha Christopheretti, she's going to be the robotics operator for the EVA. So Butch and Samantha are going to be, I'm sorry, Terry and Samantha are going to be talking throughout the EVA, um, making sure that the arm is in a location where Terry can get to the lubrication that's required. And so we are going to be essentially lubricating five different portions of the Lee, the latching end effector. This picture shows the, the face of the Lee, and you can see that there are four latches on it, labeled latch one, two, three, and four. And the next picture shows these latches in the extended position. So while the latches are the extended, um, we will be able to lubricate the latch ball screws, equalization brackets, and latch deployment rollers. This next picture shows the latches in the retracted position where we can lubricate the linear track bearings. Another thing that we're going to be lubricating is the rigidized central ball screw. So in this video, you can see that this ball screw is right in the middle of the Lee, and they are going to be putting grease 
on a tool um, and getting the feel for what that ball screw feels like through the gloved hand in using this tool. And so it's, it's a, you can see it. And the reason we're doing that first is because we really want to get Terry to have that feel of um, how it feels to, to lubricate uh, because the next task is going to be lubricating a similar ball screw for the latches. And so in this video, you can see they're going to insert this tool into the cavity of the latch and it is all going to be a, a blind operation. He's not going to actually physically see the, the ball screw that he is lubricating, and that's why we want him to make sure he is comfortable so that he knows he is lubricating the, the portion that we would like. So this is showing what it will look like on the inside of that latch and spreading grease all along that ball screw. Again, Terry's not going to be able to see that, but this is what it will look like. Once that lubrication is complete, we're going to go ahead and retract the latches so we can lubricate the linear track bearings. So each latch has these two track bearings, and we're going to lubricate both sides of those tracks on each of the four latches. If there's enough time in the EVA, we're going to go ahead and continue lubrication. We're going to extend the latches again <coughs> to lubricate the equalization brackets as well as the deployment rollers. So in this picture, again, of the extended latch, um, you can see the equalization bracket. So each latch has one equalization bracket, and then there are four latch deployment rollers per latch. So for the latch deployment rollers, we're just basically putting a little dab of grease onto the rollers. and the equalization bracket, we put a little grease along the, the inboard and the outboard sides of that bracket. Meanwhile, Butch is going to be doing the, the PMM prep portion of the EVA, so the permanent multipurpose module. Um, on his way to the work site, he's going to go up to the Z1 port toolbox where he's going to get a socket that's required um, for the work site out at node 3. So you can see his translation path out to node 3. First, he's going to go to the forward side of node 3, and he's going to be removing a non-propulsive valve, an NPV that when we are relocating the PMM, it's a very tight clearance of, of that relocation. So we'd like to remove this valve during this EVA and then in its place install a vent cover plate. So that is the valve that we're going to remove and that vent cover plate is installed. We install that cover plate to protect the sealing surfaces of that valve because once the PMM is relocated here, we do have plans to reinstall that valve. Once that's complete, he moves to the starboard side and is going to be removing a handrail that has actual physical interference when the PMM is relocated here. So we will not be reinstalling it. Next in view is the, the CBM, the common berthing mechanism. And this is actually where the, um, the PMM is going to be relocated. And so there are some launch locks that need to be released as well as a flap that needs to be opened for some camera views. So on the CBMs, there are four pedals, each that has two launch locks. And so Butch is going to be releasing all eight of those launch locks on this CBM. When he is complete with the forward side of node 3, he's going to translate over to the aft side. You can see his translation path here. So the aft side going to that CBM and essentially doing the same thing. Um, in this location, is where the beam experiment, the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, is going to be um, birthed to. And so again, he needs to release the launch locks of all four pedals and then open up the flap that's needed for the camera views. So once all of the launch locks are released, and this is for both the forward and the aft CBM, the ground is going to command these pedals open to a 45 degree position, and which is going to verify that they did deploy in that, that position, and then the ground is going to go ahead and close them, and Butch is going to verify that they are closed. Once that's complete, he's going to head back to that toolbox, put his socket away, and head on back to the airlock. And so Butch and Terry will be back at the airlock, and that's the, the planned tasks for this EVA. We do anticipate we'll have some time for the get-aheads. Uh, the first get-ahead, we would be putting wire ties on the S0 truss, 
and this is getting a head start for the third EVA. Another task we can do is to be removing a light that's on a camera port that's a P1 lower outboard work site. So there's, the light is dim there, so we'll bring the light inside and get that fixed. Another task would be reconfiguring the CETA cart. The CETA cart's the crew and equipment translation aid. So we basically want to put these in a lower profile for the, the MT, the mobile transporter, so it, it won't have any clearance issues with it. So we tie some brake handles back. <clears throat> We go ahead and we remove a coupler. There's the coupler shown there and also a swing arm. So we remove the coupler and the swing arm and we pull those off and translate over to along the, S, the, along the truss to S0 where we're gonna go ahead and stow that out of the way on the wedge face there. This is showing the port seat of cart where at this location all we would need to do is take a tether to tie down these brake handles. Another task we can do is back at the airlock, uh, there is a, a known sharp edge along the handrail of the airlock, and so we have a, a handrail clamp that can go over that sharp edge. You can see it here in the picture. So we install that, and so since this is such a highly traveled area, we install that clamp and then the crew doesn't need to worry about um, cutting their glove or, or anything else on their spacesuit when going over that handrail. And so that is the get-aheads that we can do for the CVA, and that's it for the video.